Hello, spiritual family. God is so great. Amen. We have some exciting things happening at a faithful God ministry and Vallejo First Great Church. Join a faithful God ministry at Vallejo First Great Church every Saturday at 10 a.m. Receive the good news of hope, love, and encouragement of God. We have a special online service, especially for teens. A Faithful God Ministry Club 412 Teen Online Church Service is every Saturday at 11 a.m. We also have a special Kids Online Service every Saturday at 9 a.m. Don't forget about Sunday service by Vallejo First Great Church, Pastor David Hartfield Giles, every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. If you are interested in a Spanish-speaking ministry, you are invited to join Casa Egos every Sunday at 2 p.m. beginning May 17th. We are excited about life, living in faith every day, 2020 Virtual Women's Conference event, Saturday, June 13th. The theme is based on Esther 414, for such a time as this. Again, this is a virtual event. Leave your money stresses behind with Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University classes beginning Saturday, May 23rd. This will be a virtual online class. Tune in daily to Spiritual Tea Podcasts, hosted by Pastor Alicia F. Griffin. Tune in to Great Word Podcasts, hosted by Pastor David Hartfield Dials. Like I said, exciting things are happening at A Faithful God Ministry and Vallejo First Great Church. Be sure to download our apps or visit our websites for additional information on any of our events and to stay up to date. Many blessings.
welcome spiritual family to a faithful God ministry at Vallejo First Great Church. This is an honor, it's an honor to be here with you today. Thank you for joining us, whether online or if you're listening on our podcast, Spiritual Tea Podcast. I truly appreciate you being here today. Like I said, it is an honor. And I speak for myself and Pastor David when I say that you guys are truly a blessing here to us at A Faithful God Ministry and Vallejo First Great Church. Amen? Amen. Yes. Let's begin. So first and foremost, I want you to know that God loves you passionately and faithfully passionately and faithfully and let's give glory to God for for bringing us forward this past week right because see no matter how hard the test was we made it we made it we're here today so we got to give him praise and glory yes thank you God thank you so much for your goodness and your rich, rich richness amen are you ready to receive the good news today yes It is written that the good news does not come to you just by word only. No, it comes through your power and through the Holy Spirit. Now see, I cannot change your current situation. I cannot do that, cannot do that. But what I can do is point you to the one who can. And my goal today is to bring the light of God into the darkest and the hardest areas on your pathway. Because see, what we have to do is we have to turn on the light to get rid of the dark. And so that's what we're gonna do today, amen? Amen. The title of my message today is Paper Tigers. And I'm going to spill all the spiritual tea about how to trust God for such a time as this. And I'll be referring to a couple of of different scriptures, different verses in Psalms and and in the Bible. So, but I don't want you to worry because the verses will be up on our, our screen here. So with that, let's start with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day, for your glory. Thank you for breathing life and light into each and every single one of us, dear Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that gives me the privilege to come to you boldly today. God, I recognize there is no better plan in this world than yours, and I pray for your will to be done in all areas of our lives that are empty and depleted. I pray for every person watching and listening right now, wherever they are, that you meet them where they are to experience you. Fill their lives, fill their hearts and their minds with you and your love. I pray that you cover the message today, for it is your truth, your word. Cover it with your light and grace. You are a supernatural God doing supernatural things in this world. And I pray that you use me, use us in a supernatural way to feel your presence today. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. All in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So first, first I'll be referring to Psalms chapter 9, verses 9 through 10. So while you look for that, and while it appears on the screen here, while you look for that, I'll share, I want to share a short funny story with you. So there was a Baptist preacher who went to see Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Johnson was a member of the community. And the Baptist preacher wanted to invite Mr. Johnson to church on, on Sunday, for Sunday morning service. And Mr. Johnson was a producer of fine peach brandy. And he told the pre- pastor, that told the preacher, that he would love to attend his church only if the preacher, the pastor, would drink some of his brandy and admit doing so in front of the congregation. So the preacher agreed and he drank up. And Sunday morning came and Mr. Johnson came to church and the preacher recognized him from the pulpit and said, I see Mr. Johnson is here with us this morning. I want to thank him publicly for his hospitality this week, and especially for the peaches he gave me and the spirit in which they were given. (laughs) I want to talk to you about paper tigers. Now, when you think of paper tigers, you think of the, how do they say it? The origami, the origami, how do you say it? Origami, origami, my daughter used to, know how to make, I think she still does, but her great grandmother taught her how to make butterflies out of money with origami butterflies out of money. But I wanna talk to you about paper tigers and not so much the origami one, even though you see the video right here of a paper tiger being made out of origami paper tiger, but we're not so much talking about the paper tigers, the origami paper tigers. We're talking about paper tigers, the metaphor. So paper tigers is a metaphor for anything in your life 
anything in our lives that seems powerful, that seems powerful, but truly really isn't. It truly is not, is truly is not powerful. It poses no threat whatsoever, right? They may look scary and intimidating, just like, just like the, the, uh, the real tigers, right? With big claws or whatever. I mean, okay, so side note, side note. So we were watching Tiger King. Now, has anybody watched Tiger King? Anybody watch Tiger King? Okay. I'm just amazed that those are actual people and those are real life stories. But anyway, we were watching Tiger King one night and we a discussion came up about having a baby tiger as a pet. Now, personally me, I don't want a baby tiger as a pet. I don't want a door tiger, I don't want a mini tiger, I don't want a big tiger. I don't I don't want a tiger none whatsoever. A tiger is very intimidating, right? So tigers are very intimidating. But just like the real life tigers, the paper tigers are intimidating too. They're scary. They pose fear, but they're really not any type of threat. They don't hold any type of power, right? And what happens is, is that, see, our mind creates these paper tigers. Our mind creates these paper tigers. And basically what they do, what it does is it changes our perspective. It changes our reality, right? It changes our current reality to a whole different reality where it's only focusing on how how big the paper tigers are, right? And so what the reality is, is, is that we can continue to feed. We continue to feed the paper tigers until they get larger and larger. Now you probably wonder, well, what would be the paper tigers? What it truly is the metaphor for the paper tigers? The paper tigers represent the anxiety the pain, the fear, it makes us scared, it makes us fearful, it makes us feel all alone, right? Those are the paper tigers. The paper tigers, those are the paper tigers, right? The paper tigers has no more control over us than what we are willing to give it, than what we are willing to give it. It has no control over us. And the question was once asked, who wins, good or bad, who wins? Good or bad, who wins? Troubles or joys, who wins? And the answer is the one you feed the most. The one you feed the most. And also what paper tigers do, what they do is they unnecessarily, unnecessary, now listen to how we're unnecessarily, they unnecessarily stunt, stunts our growth. Just like coffee. Now, as many of you can see, I drink a lot of coffee but it stunts our growth, our spiritual growth, growth, right? It stunts our growth. It holds us back. It holds us back. It holds us back from, from what we're meant to do. It holds us back from where, where we're meant to be. It holds us back from us, from what we're to become, right? It holds us back of how we're meant to serve. That's what paper tigers do. Are you still with me? Paper tigers. Now I realize that this is a challenging time for most, for a lot of people. There's a great deal of disruption and uncomfortable adjustments being made right now. And honestly, many of you right now may be in a very difficult spot on your journey. And there's, there, cause, because there's so much pain and so much uncertainty in our wor world and in our lives, we have a lot of paper tigers in our lives right now. We have a lot of fear, a lot of, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. Yesterday, I was part of our Spanish Bible study, Caso Oecos. And side note, side note, before I continue with this, continue with what I have to say on this one, but side note, do not forget to join Caso Oecos on Sundays at two o'clock beginning May 24th. And don't worry, Caso Huecos is a Spanish speaking, as our Spanish speaking Bible study. Don't worry if you don't speak Spanish because Pastor Monica does an awesome job with translating. But anyway, like I was saying, yesterday evening I was part of their rehearsal. And Pastor Arturo Sanchez referred to Psalms 23. He referred to the part of, I shall not want. And the question in the Bible study was, how do you not want? How do you not want in a time such as this? How do you not want? How do you not want for yourself? How do you not want for your family in a time such as this? I re recently read, I recently read a conversation between a single mom and someone from her church that was giving her spiritual guidance. 
and this was recent. This was a recent conversation. The single mom was talking very openly. She was talking very openly, and she said that she had just lost her job. She had just lost her job, and she was feeling stressed out. And so the person that was giving her spiritual guidance from a church, her church member, said, said this, told her this, just trust in the Lord. And the single mom, she kind of spoke back. She spoke back and she said, I'm trying to. I'm trying to trust in God. I'm trying to trust in God. But how do you do that? Like, how do you do that? How do you trust in God when there's no paycheck? How do you trust in God when you have all these bills that's mounting up? How do you trust in God when your children are at home? How do you trust in God when you need to feed your family? How do you do that? How are you supposed to trust in God in a time such as this? And that was a recent conversation. And it's really, it's really easy to tell someone else, hey, just trust in God, just trust in the Lord. We've all done it. We've all done it. It's easy for us to say, just trust in the Lord, just pray, just have faith, keep your faith. It's easy to do that. But when you don't have a paycheck and when your family is hungry and when the bills are mounting up, when they're mounting up, when you're battling depression, when you're feeling all alone, when you feel like that everything that you thought was stable is now unstable, how do you trust in God in that moment? How do you trust in God in a time such as this? Right? One person I read, I read one person said, how do you trust in God when you're running out of toilet paper? Amen? So how do we trust in God in a time like this? How do we trust in God? In Psalms chapter nine, verses nine through nine, verses nine through 10, it says, the Lord is a refuge for the opposed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name trust in you. How many of you trust someone and you don't even know their name? How many of you know someone and you don't even know, you trust someone and you don't even know their name? You don't even know their name, right? So personally me, personally, if I don't know your name, I'm not trusting you. You know, I got one of those kind of like unspoken things with me, right? One of those unspoken things. Like if I don't know your name, if I don't know your name, I trust you as far as I can throw you type of thing, right? It's that simple. It's almost along the lines for me, stranger danger, right? Stranger danger, right? And I read a funny thing with a, a funny answer from a comedian when they, when a comedian answered the question, what is God's name? The comedian said he was 23 when he realized God's last name didn't start with the letter D and rhyme with slamming, right? I read that. That was pretty funny. But last week I spoke about when you have an intimate relationship with God, when you have an relation, intimate relationship with God, your conversations are bold and relational, right? They're intimate relationships with God, right? And this is the same for us. This is the same for this too. What you call someone tells the depth of the relationship that you have with them. What you call someone tells the depth, it reveals the depth of the relationship that you have with them, right? So. For example, I call my husband love and babe, right? That reveals the type of relationship that I have with him, right? It reveals, like another example, here's another example. My husband and my son, they share the same name, Jamie. They share the same name, Jamie. But it's not spelled anywhere near on paper as the name Jamie. It's not spelled nowhere near it, right? But see, when someone calls them or when someone says their name, we know the level of a relationship they have with them on how they, their name is pronounced. So if someone calls them, they know how much, how that person knows them, how well that person knows them by the pronunciation of their name. Correct? Correct. So in order to get to know God's name, in order to get to know God's name today, we need to ask, who is God? Who is God? We're going to take it back to, to, to basics. Who is God? 
Who is God? God is strength. God is strength. It says in Psalms 22, 19, but you, Lord, do not far, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. See, Paul said in the New Testament that whenever you're weak, whenever you don't have enough strength on your own, whenever you're hurting, God's strength is made perfect in you, made perfect in you. That means the strength is already there and it's perfect strength. It's not weak strength, it's perfect strength. It's the st enough strength, the amount of strength that you need. It's perfect strength, right? It's already there. Who is God? God is strength. Those who know his name, trust in him. His name is strength. Who is God? He is our refuge. He is our refuge. Going back to Psalms chapter nine, verse nine, it says, the Lord is a refuge for the opposed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Meaning, when we feel like we are falling, when we feel exhausted, when we feel broken, God is our shelter, he's our safe place. He's our self safe place from danger and from trouble. The verse says, he's a stronghold in times of trouble, meaning our circumstances, when our circumstances and our weather changes, when it changes, when the storm starts to come in, when the stars, the storms start to come in to drench us, to drench us, drench us with uncertainty, with discouragement, with abandonment, with all the troubles, when the storms are coming in, God is the place that has been fortified to protect us from the attack and the storms. I'm going to say that one more time. God is the place that has been fortified to protect us from the attacks and the storm. He is the fortress. He is our fortress, our tower. Who is God? God is our refuge. Those who know his name trust in him. His name is refuge. Who is God? He is faithful. Psalms 31 5 says, into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord my faithful God. Now see, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I've let God down numerous times. I've let him down numerous times, but his faithfulness has never once, never once failed me. Never once failed me. And see, the good news is, is that even though, even in the times when we are faith, faithless, Right. Even in the times when we are faithless, God is faithful because he can never disown himself. He's always faithful. Who is God? He is a faithful God. Who is God? God is faithful. Those who know his name trust in him. His name is faithful. Who is God? He is our strength. He is our refuge. He is faithful. Who is God? God is hope. It says in Psalm 65, 5, you faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds, O God, our Savior. You are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. Who is God? He is hope. He is hope. See, our hope is not in a person. It's not in a person or in a leader or even in the government or the system. It's not even in medicine. It's not even in medicine. Our hope is in the all powerful, ever present, all knowing God who spoke and created this very universe. Our hope is God. Our hope is God. In Isaiah 40, 31, it says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. See, it is written. It is written. It's written right there. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, will renew their strength. Each time we put our hope in God, our strength is renewed. Our strength is renewed. We get brand new. We get the new, new strength. We get the new, new strength. It's not like God says, oh, you need strength today, okay? Okay, Pastor Alicia, you need some strength today. Well, let me go to this recycling bin out here and let me just recycle this old strength that I had gave you. No, 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 no. He gives us the new, new strength, right? We get the renewed strength, right? Basically, our strength is renewed. 
it's renewed. And when it's renewed, it'll make us soar. It'll make us soar. It'll make us fly, right? It'll make us fly. We won't faint. We'll be able to run. We won't be weary, right? We get that new, new strength, right? And who don't want that new, new strength? I want that new, new strength, right? When everything around us is hopeless, he is hope. Who is God? Who is God? God is hope. God is hope. Those who know his name, trust in him. His name is hope. Who is God? He is our strength. He is our refuge. He is faithful. He is hope. Who is God? God is our companion. It says in Psalms 75, 1, it says, we thank you, O God, we give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. See, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for God, who's, for a God who's always near, who's always near because what that means is that I'm never alone. What that means is that you're never alone. What that means is that my family's never alone. They're never alone and I'm thankful for that. They are never alone. James says in, in the New Testament that wherever, whenever you draw, whenever you draw near to God, whenever you're hurting, whenever you're afraid, whenever you feel unsettled or unsure, right? He's always near. He draws near to you. God is not a far off, distant, uninvolved God. That's not what he is. He's a loving, caring, compassionate God who is always near and he will never leave you. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. That's God. God is always with us. God is always comforting us. God is always strengthening us. Who is God? God is near. Those who know his name trust in him. His name is companion. Who is God? God is peace. Isaiah 23 says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. And see, I have that, I have that verse and a picture inside my office. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. See, we can never avoid trouble. We can never avoid that. We can never avoid trouble. We can never avoid the storms and the hurricanes, right? We can never avoid the turbulence. But when we adjust our focus, when we adjust our focus on God, we experience perfect peace, perfect peace. We got perfect strength. We got perfect peace. Right? We experience perfect peace. Even in the midst of pain, we can have perfect peace. As we focus on God, we become more stable. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Right? Who is God? God is peace. God is peace. Those who know his name, trust in him. Who is God? His name is peace. Who is God? He is our strength. He is our refuge. He is faithful. He is hope. He is our companion. He is peace. Who is God? God is love. In 1 John verse in chapter in 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 it says, "Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Who is God? He is a loving God." His love is total, meaning complete and absolute. I said this before in one of my sermons. His love is wide, meaning covering us. His love is long, meaning extending and high. His love is deep, meaning it can reach the depths of discouragement, fear, doubt, and despair. His love is immeasurable, immeasurable, meaning too extensive to measure. It's inexhaustible, meaning there's no way for us to use up all his love because Love, his love has existing, existing abundance. Who is God? God is love. Those who know his name, trust in him. His name is love. Who is God? He is our strength. He is our refuge. He is faithful. He is hope. 
He is our companion. He is peace. He is love. Who is God? God is the great king. He is the great king. It is said that God is the great king over all. He rules over creations, nations, all the way down to individuals, to us. He asserts his control over the most powerful forces. He proclaims his authority over all the false gods of the nation. See, false gods are the paper tigers. The false gods are the greed. It's the greed, the addiction, the vices that have strongholds on our lives, right? He is the king and he rules over all that. Who is God? God is king. Those who know his name, trust in him. His name is king. Who is God? He is a just God. Psalms 1 verses 4 through 6 says, But evil people are not like this at all. But evil people are not like this at all. They are like straw that the wind blows away. Sinners will be condemned by God and kept apart from God's own people. The righteous are guided and protected by the Lord, but the evil are the way to their doom. But the evil are on their way to the doom. See, right now, in a time such as this, some of you are being treated unfairly, right? Some of you feel like you're being treated unfairly. But see, understand the evil people, the enemies, the paper tigers, they're like straws. They're like straws. They blow away in the wind. Like, understand, what does paper do in the wind? It blows away. So what does paper tigers do? It blows away. Just go with the wind. Go wherever the wind takes you. Just out of here, right? See, God is the wind. He will blow each one of those paper tigers away. He will vindicate for us, right? Who is God? God is just. Those who know his name, trust in him. His name is justice. Who is God? You are my God. You are my God. In Psalms 118, chapter 118, verses 28 through 29, it says, You are my God, and I give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. Who is God? You are my God. Who is God? He is your God. Who is God? God is my God. Those who know his name trust in him. His name is my God. Who is God? He is our strength. He is our refuge. He is faithful. He is hope. He is our companion. He is peace. He is love. He is the great king. He is justice. Who is God? You are my God. Those who know your name trust in you. What do you call God? What do you call God? What do you call God? Because what you call him reflects your trust in him. I want to share with you an illustration. There was a woman. There was a woman who was going through some difficult and trying circumstances. She was experiencing major distress, distress in her marriage and her job was very unfulfilling. She became so distraught over her circumstances that she felt like just giving up. She felt alone and she had tried everything she could do to better herself, her marriage, things at work, but it seemed everything took turned out to be horrible for her. Finally, she came to the point of exhaustion and felt there was no way out of her terrible circumstances and there would never be any more joy in her life. And so one day she was sitting in her kitchen, very frustrated and lonely. She sat there for a long time and just wept. And then she noticed a small sparrow had somehow gotten into her kitchen. And so she opened up the door thinking the sparrow was just simply fly out the door. To her surprise, the sparrow kept flying into the closed window that was just right above the door. And this distraught woman noticed several times that the sparrow would fly directly into the top of the window thinking it was open to freedom and each time colliding directly into the window. The sparrow, the small sparrow after each time hitting the window will become weaker and weaker. And the woman also noticed the sparrow hitting the window lower and lower each time he flew. 
into the window until he got so weak that he couldn't even fly. All he can do was walk. And then she noticed this little sparrow very slowly walk through the door to freedom. As she observed the little bird walk through the door, the sparrow began to regain his strength and he flew off into the air free again. It was as though God literally opened her spiritual eyes. She realized in just about every area of her life, she was behaving just like that sparrow. She was trying, she was trying in her own way to get out of confining situations she was in, each time being knocked down in defeat and, react, and reacting harshly to her family members, knocked down, not giving her best at work, knocked down, paying back evil for evil done to her, knocked down, saying and doing things she knew were wrong, knocked down. She finally realized that all she had to do was just be like the sparrow, to very humbly walk in the power of God's grace and mercy and allow him to work out all her headaches and difficulties. See, I know. I know those tigers are big. Yes, those tigers are big and they're growing, they're growing bigger and bigger and bigger in our lives, right? In your life. I know it. Those claws are huge. They're big. They're big. Right? They're big. But see, my question isn't about how big those tigers are in your life, how big the paper tigers are. The question is, is what do you call God? What do you call God? What you call him reflects how well you know him. What you call him reflects how well you know him. And those who know his name, trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in him. Yes. Listen, 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 listen. It's time, it's time. It's time for us to break through. It's time to have for us to have a breakthrough. It's time for us to break through. It's time for us to break through the stronghold and the vices. It's time for us to break through the fear. It's time for us to break through the worry, the anxiety, right? It's time for us to break the silence. It's time for us to rise up. It's time for us to rise up. It's time for us to rise up from the darkness. It's time for us to rise up from the hurt, right? Rise up to all that Christ has given us through the power of his Holy Spirit. Why did Jesus die for us? Why? For such a time as this. For such a time as this. Scripture, scripture tells us that greater he is in us than, in he, than he in the world. Meaning we are way more powerful. We are way more powerful than what we cred, give ourselves credit for. You are way more powerful than what you give yourself credit for. Right? Because see... Although we are no match for the tigers that manifest in our lives, God is in us. He's in us. It's written. He is in us. Meaning those tigers are no match for God. Right? Those tigers are no match for God. How do we trust God for such a time as this? We need to know his name. We need to know his name. His name is strength. His name is refuge. His name is faithful. His name is hope. His name is companion, peace, love, king, justice. My God, that is his name. Those who know his name, trust in him. So I'm going to finish it up. The last, this is the last thing. This is the last thing I want to leave you on. This is the most important thing. This is the most important thing. If there's one thing that I would like for you to remember from this message today, is that God is our shears. He is our shears. And see, from my understanding, from my understanding, scissors beat paper every single time. Amen? Amen. Wherever you are right now, wherever you are right now, please stand up. Please stand up and lift your hands to receive the Lord Jesus Christ right now. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We pray that your living word would touch hearts all over the world today. God, for those who might 
find it difficult to trust in you. We pray that by the power of your spirit and the truth of your word, that you might teach us to put all of our hope and all our trust in you. God, you are a rock, our fortress. We surrender here to you today. We commit our spirit into your hands. We know your name. We know you are the provider. You are a strength, redeemer, love, God, king, and faithful. You are my God. We pray that you will fill our mind and our hearts and our thoughts until there's none of us and only all of you. We believe and trust over the next week as we commit to being more faithful and trusting to you to release all the paper tigers in our lives, to rise up in your glory. We believe that you will move in a mighty way in our lives. We thank you in advance for the way that you will reveal yourself to us over the next week. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. In Jesus' name, amen. So with that, let's come to a close. I enjoyed our time here today. I really hope that you received the good news. I really hope that you felt the love, the hope, the encouragement, and how much God loves you and how much you can just trust in Him in a time such as this. A quick reminder, quick reminder before we go about Vallejo First Grade Church Sunday service tomorrow with Pastor David at 9.30 a.m. So be sure to watch in on that. It's gonna be a very powerful message. You don't wanna miss out on that. This week, this week, you will receive absolute blessings, absolute blessings because you got God's unconditional love. He's gonna carry you. He's gonna carry you in anything that touches you. Amen, amen. My friends, you heard the good news today and I hope, and I hope we have that you felt his presence in his life in your life today. And if so, all I ask is that you share the good news today, that you share it with at least five people. Amen. Amen. Many blessings. Uncertainty. It's hard to navigate through life, meaning living in faith every day. At a Faithful God Ministry, it is our privilege to share the good news of hope, love, and encouragement. It is my privilege today to share the good news, the good news of hope, encouragement, love, and the love of God. Join us online for Saturday service at 10 a.m. to receive the good news.